Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. Today I have got the Okoku 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's do an unboxing of this, put a charge controller to it, and then see how well this performs with a discharge test. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. All right, I'm gonna open this box up and we'll see what comes in this kit. So right off the top, there is a large user manual. We'll get into that. All right, you've got your usual packing foam and there is the Akoku 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Nice, it's got a metal case and has handles which make this easy to pick up and carry. Now, lithium iron phosphate batteries are known for being lightweight already, but this one, man, that's a nice case. All right, let me bring you in a little closer so you can see what's going on. Here on the front side, you can see it does have the Akoku logo with the lithium iron phosphate 12 volt 100 amp hours. The nominal voltage is 12.8 volts, and the kilowatt hour rating of this battery is 1.28 kilowatt hours. All right, if I turn over to this side, there is a nice carrying handle, and it is spring-loaded, and it has a rubber coating on here for extra comfort when carrying this battery. Um, but, like I said before, these batteries don't weigh a whole lot anyhow. So, it is nice though, I like that feature. Okay, if we turn over to this other side, it is very similar there as the other one, just gives you the same information, which is nice. So you don't have to go looking for that whichever direction you are uh, spinning this. Now here on the top, there are the terminals. So these little covers can be popped off or slid off, I should say. And that allows you to access those uh, posts. The entire case is made of metal. It uh, seems like a very well-built design here. Let's go ahead and test out the voltage to see what this is shipped at here. Got my multimeter. Turn this to volts and go to DC. All right, 13.27. Before we connect this battery up to a charge controller, I've got my JIS screwdriver. Let's undo these screws and take a look at the inside of this battery. Just got all those screws out of there. Let's see how well this lifts up here. All right, looks like we've got some four gauge cable for uh, going to those terminals. Your BMS cables are all nicely wrapped over here. There is a uh, heat sink around that BMS board. And it looks like the compression is done by another plate of metal in there. Very nice. Now I'm not gonna open anything up, uh, but I just wanted to show you in there to uh, so you could see what's going on. There is a good bit of extra space around the cells, which I suppose could help with some heat dissipation. Um, but I figure that they're trying to make this battery fit the standard size of a battery, and so the extra case space is required. Okay, I will put this back together, and we will go over to a solar panel and a charge controller and get this fully charged before doing a discharge test. I've got a charge controller connected to a 400 watt solar panel, and I've got the battery connected to that, and everything seems to be charging. It's currently at 13.8 volts. Now, you're gonna to want to charge this battery at 14.6 volts. Let's go over some specs here while this battery is charging up. It is a 12.8 nominal voltage, approximate charge time of six hours. The nominal capacity is 100 amp hours. Max charging current is 50 amps. Max continuous discharge current is less than or equal to 100 amps. The cutoff voltage is 10 volts, which means if this gets down to 10 volts, the battery will shut itself off. And the charging voltage is 14.6 volts, plus or minus 0.05 volts. Open circuit voltage, 12 to 13.3 volts. Operating temperature, zero to 45 degrees Celsius. Operating temperature, the standard charging is zero to 45 degrees Celsius, and the discharge is negative 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. I left the Akoku battery on the charger for a couple of days, and it is now at 100% charged. So it's time to do a discharge test. I've got an inverter with a heater right here, and that will be the load we use for this discharge. I've also got the kilowatt meter and also a drop meter that will allow us to see the state of the battery as we are working with it. I'm also going to use a stopwatch to time this unit. 
So real quick, let's go over the math behind figuring out the uh, efficiency or the expected output of the battery. So for instance, this battery is a 1,280 watt hour. And so if we say 0 0.85 times 1,280, that's uh, 1,088, and then you divide that by the load. So let's just say that this is gonna run at 700 watts. You would say divided by 700, and that's 1.55. Now, that's a decimal point for the time. So if we say times 60, this would run for 93 minutes on uh, a, a load of 700 watts. So that's kind of the idea behind this discharge test. All right, let's go ahead and begin. To get this test underway, I need to hook up my equipment. I'm gonna take the positive cable of the inverter and place it here on the positive terminal of the battery. Before I tighten this down all the way, my little meter needs to have power from the battery. And so I'm going to connect this. Now I don't want anything to be between the terminals and the battery cable. So this right here needs to go up on top of that cable. Now it's a good idea to use a resistor here on the battery to charge up the capacitors in my inverter. I forgot mine up at the house, so it's probably gonna have a little bit of a pop. It's something you don't really want. And uh, you can use switches or breakers to uh, re uh, prevent that. But I'm gonna also take my negative lead on my meter. Get that set up in here. If we take a look at this meter, you can see it says 14.4 volts on the battery and everything else has been zeroed out except for 100 amp hours which is important for us to see how much this battery has. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip on my inverter. I'm gonna reset my kilowatt meter down here. All right, and now I'm gonna get my stopwatch ready and I will turn on the load. Let's see what we have on setting number one. 660, let's see what setting number two is. We've got 900, and 80 watts, very good. Now for safety purposes, we've got uh, 77 or 76 amps leaving here. This can uh, generate up to 100 amps continually. So let's just check that math real quick. 980 divided by 12. Yeah, so we are definitely within the range of this battery here. Now that we have the watt value of this heater, we can determine how long we think this battery should last. So if you say 0.85, times the 1,280, that's 1,088, divided by the uh, 980, that's uh, 1.11, and if we say times 60, that's 66.6 uh, .6 minutes. So we'll come back in a bit and see how well this is doing. At 55 minutes in, we have 916 watt hours used. We're at 29.8 amp hours left battery is at 12.2 volts. Now, of course, that value is with a load. As soon as I pull the load off of this battery, it will jump back up to a reasonable level. Still pulling approximately 80 amps. We've got uh, 980 to 990 watts there on the, uh, the consumption for this load. So, all right, I'll bring you back whenever the amp hours get down to zero, and we will see what our watt hours are and what the time is. My time calculation was off. It's already been 71 minutes and we've got 7.1 amp hours left and we've used 1.1 kilowatt hour. So we are doing fantastic with this battery. Almost done. And it looks like we will be able to hit that uh, 1.2 kilowatt hours with this battery. So as you can see here, the screen says 1.2 kilowatt hours consumed and we've still got 4.3 amp hours left. So. The display does not show uh, detailed enough information to get that last 80. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this test, but you can see that it has performed very well, perhaps even a little bit better than the uh, 1,280 that we have here on the, uh, the rating. So very nice. I'm glad to see this battery performing so well. Now you'll note after I turned off the load, it has 12.6 volts. I also have to turn off my inverter here and we should see that 12.6 eventually come back up to about 12.8.
So when this battery is fully discharged, it rests there at the 12.8. So let me give this a moment and we'll see uh, what that value goes back up to. I am noticing that running 80 amps for an hour and 15 minutes has gotten the top of the case a little bit warm, but whenever I feel the cables, they are not warm at all. So that's a good sign. Uh, so it has dissipated a bit of heat off the top. The sides, they feel fine. So all the heat has gone up here. All right, we got up to 12.7 uh, now. So I'll give this about 10 more minutes and see if it hits, well, wait. I saw it blip there at 12.8 for a second. So, okay, there we go. That's what we like to see. All right, excellent. This battery has performed as expected. Well, I am very pleased with the outcome of our battery test here. This Akoku 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery has performed better than I expected. So I was anticipating somewhere around 67 minutes of runtime with the load that I had and it turned out to have about 75 minutes or maybe even a little bit more. So outperformed what I was anticipating based on the math. Now, uh, there are a lot of things I like about this battery. First of all, it has the carrying handles, which is something I am not used to seeing uh, of this quality on a battery. Uh, often, oftentimes you'll see those little plastic handles or a little uh, rope, but it's nice to have these uh, rubber coated metal handles. So very cool. The terminal covers are extra big, which is super nice to see. Oftentimes, all I'll ever see is those little um, uh, plastic nuts that go on there, but these will actually slip over and cover everything well. And as you can hear, they make a great snap on there, so uh, a child would not be able to easily pull those off if they ever got to this battery. The all metal case is nice. I think that probably helps to dissipate any heat like we saw before. Uh, running this thing at 80 amps for over an hour is bound to generate a good bit of heat. Having the screws there lets you open this up if for some reason you ever had to. I um, was nice to see that, so definitely, definitely good. Um, of course, it is a standard battery size, so it will fit inside of a box or a housing as need be. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you check out the link in the description down below to find more information about this battery. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I just put the battery back on the charger. The sun's not out yet, but I wanted to show you this. At 12.8 volts, the display here will show that this is resting at 81%. So we had almost totally discharged this. Not quite, but it is exactly where we wanted it to be. So that is great. All right, I'm gonna put this in the sun and let it charge up for a while and uh, we will uh, have a nice happy battery again.